With Weblec, you get direct access to top experts in equine medicine and surgery. Years, things like incisor realignment and canine buffing have been prevalent in the dental um, field. And, and are these treatments on these teeth inducing this disease syndrome? Or is it multifactorial? And I think that's probably a reasonably safe bet that there's an aspect of all these factors that are involved in the etiology of this syndrome. Okay, so what are the characteristics of, of the syndromes? Well, it progresses in a chordo-rostral fraction, usually starts at the canines or the O3s and migrates forward, affects the sinuses and canines, as I said. It's a painful disease. That's a pretty common finding in these, these affected animals. They're painful and it affects age horses, as we said before. It causes periodontitis. Does it actually cause periodontitis or is this a secondary infection because of the loss of the structure and integrity and that bond between the tooth and the periodontium? Um, causes of resorptive and or proliferative changes of dental tissue and the proliferation of dentine and then getting into pulp finally and causing irreparable damage to these teeth. A regular cementum is laid down to try and stabilise the tooth before we get too much loss of tooth integrity these areas of necrosis get too widespread. Okay, so here's another, another nice slide from the paper we were talking about before, and it shows that this tooth is sectioned in eight sections, and we're primarily going to just look at section three, which is near the crown of this tooth, and section six, which is nearer the apex of this tooth. Level three here, there's the resorptive lesion here that showed with this black arrow here, and there's a regular cementum that's laid down to try and repair this lesion that's within the tooth here. Okay, we've got dentine, which 